The attraction of playing next to an all-time great Big Three has lured about every free agent available to Brooklyn. The Nets acquired some dangerous role players, headlined by a former All-Star in Paul Millsap, but also Patty Mills, James Johnson, and DeAndre Bembry. The Nets are also picking up LaMarcus Aldridge again, and they're currently looking to get something in exchange for DeAndre Jordan. With Blake Griffin, Bruce Brown, and Nicholas Claxton already on the squad, the Nets have elite depth on their roster, so how unfair is this Nets team for the rest of the NBA? Can anyone take them down? Stick around to find out. Over three quarters of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed, so if you haven't already and enjoy my content, help me get to 50k by subscribing. Also hit thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Now let's get into this. Paul Millsap's 36 years old, and he's well past his prime, but that doesn't mean he can't provide solid minutes as a backup. Paul still ranked a solid 14th among power forwards in real plus minus last season in Denver. Millsap can space the defense out nicely by hitting deep mid-range and three-point shots. He can also hit the occasional post fade. He barely got playing time in the Nuggets series against Phoenix, but when he was on the floor, in each game he played, his plus minus was higher than each member of the Nuggets starting five. That was in the conference semis. In terms of his first round performance against Portland, Millsap only got 13 minutes per game, contributing 6 points on average in the Nuggets 5 game series win. Millsap's a really solid small ball 5, and while he struggled with his efficiency in the 2021 playoffs, the Nuggets just had a ton of big men in their depth chart, so Millsap wasn't able to establish a rhythm with his lack of playing time. He wasn't the best fit in the Mile High City. However, in Kings County, the 15-year veteran stretch big should thrive, providing offense and solid low post defense at the five spot next to KD, Kyrie, and Harden. He got exposed in space at times, but for the most part, Millsap's lateral quickness stood the task in these recent playoffs. So while he's approaching father time, I think Paul's got the chance to make his ring-chasing venture successful here. Great pickup for GM Sean Marks and the Nets front office. In 2019-20, Patty Mills set a career high in points per game. He followed that up with a career second best scoring tally this past season. Back in the 2014 finals against the Miami Heat, the now 33-year-old shot 53% from the field and 52% from three-point range in the Spurs five-game series win. Mills has championship experience and he's quickly moving up the ranks in all-time three-pointers made, currently ranking 73rd just a few spots behind Del Curry. With one of the quickest releases in basketball, Miles is a player that opposing defenders have to keep a body on at all times. That means more space on the floor for the Nets trio to dazzle in ISO scenarios, or an open look for one of the better three-point shooters of this generation. The most underrated pickup of the bunch was James Johnson. Known as Bloodsport, Johnson's got a black belt in karate, toughness that's been displayed in some NBA games. We'd be in that discussion and deserves to be. Absolutely. And now James Johnson inside. Oh my! Torian Prince threw right side down. James Johnson gets involved. What's been proven with recent NBA champions in the Milwaukee Bucks and P.J. Tucker, the L.A. Lakers and Rajon Rondo, and the Toronto Raptors with Kyle Lowry is that one gritty, hard-nosed player who's willing to do anything to stick up for his teammates means so much to a team's chances at achieving the ultimate goal. James Johnson's that player who you love if he's your teammate, but you absolutely can't stand if you're playing against him. After finishing off his time in New Orleans, Johnson said in his exit interview, just to experience playing with Zion, Brandon Ingram, Lonzo, it was something I'm going to be able to talk about with my kids. If Johnson cherished playing with the young Pels, then he's going to fully embrace the challenge of bringing a championship to one of the five boroughs in New York City. I had the pleasure of watching a young James Johnson in the flesh back when he played in Toronto. In 2014-15 with my Raptors, he threw down one of the sickest posters I've seen live to this day. Here's James Johnson exploding. Oh, man! Oh, with an absolutely oh. monstrous jam! Yeah! And he was a solid piece off the bench for the fourth seed in the East that year. He only averaged eight points per game. But Johnson's always played much better than his stats would lead you to believe. In just the last two seasons, Johnson has spent time in Miami, Minnesota, Dallas, and New Orleans. 
Now the gritty journeyman joins one of the league's most talented teams. Johnson can defend multiple positions up front and on the perimeter, so his versatility should add a new element to the Nets' attack. Joe Harris, Blake Griffin, and Bruce Brown were asked to do way too much in the 2021 playoffs. While they had bright spots, those three aren't fit to be top scoring options. However, when you move them back in the depth chart with the return of two of the game's best scores in Kyrie and Harden, plus the addition of Paul Millsap, Patty Mills, and James Johnson, Harris, Griffin, and Brown become much more effective in supporting roles. A minor deal for the Nets was picking up DeAndre Bembry, who needs to stop shooting threes or significantly increase his percentage. The man's shot under 30% from deep in three straight seasons. Defensively, though, which was the area that Brooklyn needed to improve upon the most, Bembry's extremely pesky and, at 27 years of age, about to play on just his third team. DeAndre's still looking for the right situation for his talents to thrive, but here's why the Nets needed to sign him. Chris Middleton for the Bucks dropped two 35-plus point games against Brooklyn, so scrappy defenders like James Johnson and the underrated wing Bembry should help somewhat slow down Cash. The reason I say Bembry's underrated despite his lack of a three-point shot is that he's damn laterally quick. And while he doesn't have the highest IQ, Raptor fans would know that he can stick with some of the best guards in basketball. For 10 to 20 minutes per game, I expect Bembry to provide some big time value for Brooklyn. It's great to see LaMarcus Aldridge at full strength, who's been medically cleared by doctors and will return to the Nets. He was forced to retire midway through the 2021 season due to a heart condition, which fortunately seems to be past him. He's now part of a long list of players throughout NBA history that have come out of retirement, the most recent being Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, and Arvidas Sabonis, but also George Mikan, Bob Cousy, and Jason Kidd. This could have been a Chris Bosh type situation. Bosh was diagnosed with blood clots, which ended his pro career. I'm glad LaMarcus got everything worked out, and I hope Steve Nash manages his minutes properly and doesn't overplay him. A player with a heart condition in the fast-paced NBA should be monitored cautiously. Aldridge may have only played five games for Brooklyn in 2021, but he played outstanding, averaging 13 points, 5 boards, 2.2 blocks on 52% shooting from the field and 80% shooting from distance in 26 minutes each night. LaMarcus consistently picking and popping next to three of the league's best playmakers will be a dangerous weapon if Aldridge can stay on the floor. He did just turn 36, and he's far from the player he once was in Portland, but adding a championship to his impressive NBA resume could solidify the five-time All-NBA player's place in the Hall of Fame. Adding a championship seemed to be a big-time motivation for him in the small sample size he played for the Nets last year. So, are the Nets unfair for the rest of the league? In one sense, I'd say no, because these free agent pickups were perfectly legal and there's nothing wrong with the balance of the NBA. Even bottom-feeding fan bases like the Rockets and Cavaliers can't complain right now given Houston got Jalen Green and Cleveland got Evan Mobley. Actually, Cleveland just gave Jarrett Allen $100 million, so Cavs fans may be complaining. But also, the Lakers additions were similar to the Nets, and we can't write off LA. If the Nets go on to win the 2022 title, we can't say their free agent signings were unfair because right now we're all considering the Lakers to be a similar threat. Additionally, the Heat signed Kyle Lowry and P.J. Tucker. They're going to be a problem out east. The Bulls signed Lonzo, DeRozan, and Caruso. They're no walk in the park. The Jazz and Celtics made some solid signings as well. In another sense, I'd say yes, this is unfair because while the Milwaukee Bucks will be serious threats and deservedly took down Brooklyn, the writing's on the wall with that matchup. Kevin Durant's foot was inches away from putting the Nets in the conference finals. Kyrie and Harden got hurt, which is on them for not staying healthy. The Bucks deserve to win. In 2022, though, given they stay on the floor, a Brooklyn versus Milwaukee series could play out a lot differently next year. Let me know your thoughts on the Nets in the comments section. Follow me on Instagram at DFlowHoops. Appreciate you for watching. DFlow signing off.